Today I listened to Gary Lineker on TalkSport talking about scoring a late winner for a club that you love and being no feeling like it in the world. Try telling that to Lee Wood. Who lose in a fight, comes from behind and scores an emphatic knockout. So going into the fight, I, I called this fight beforehand. I was asked, obviously, <clears throat> a lot of people asked me my prediction of the fight. I fought Josh Warrington. I was a former featherweight. Um, and they wanted to know who I thought would win. Now, I picked Lee Wood. I thought that Lee Wood would win the fight because I think that Josh has been in maybe just one or two too many tough fights. And at some point that catches up on you. Um, and I thought that Lee Wood, although they're similar sort of age, I just thought thought that he was the fresher fighter. But the way the fight played out, I didn't expect it to, to be like that. Um, Josh was bossing the fight. At times he was on the back foot. At times he was he was looking really, really good. It was bullying Lee Wood at times. I think Lee Wood looked a little bit confused and, and wasn't really sure what to do. You know, he started off as a southpaw, took him a while to go back into his, his more natural orthodox stance. But but even that, it wasn't really effective for him. Josh, I thought, up until the knockout, had put in a, a performance that I didn't even expect that he, he still had in him. So I got that completely wrong. And it looked like he was on his way to maybe a late stoppage or certainly a very wide points victory. And then Lee Wood does what he does. Uh, I've heard people talking about it. Josh Taylor, who was in the gym with him, uh, Ben Davison, his coach, obviously, as well, talking about the punching power of this guy. And it's clear to see. You've seen what he done in the McConnell fight, and you've seen what he done in the Josh Warrington fight. And Josh is someone who's really got a solid chin. He, not that he relies on his chin, but he does to a certain extent because he's, he's happy to take a shot to land his own. But that, that shot that landed, lovely, beautiful, well-timed punch, kind of coming down away on onto Josh's chin. Um, and it was a great shot. And the shots afterwards, this is, this is what's really important. The first shot clearly hurt Josh, but it was the two or three that came after it that were clean, right on the chin, right on the button as well. They were the ones that inflicted the real damage. And there's not many fighters can do that, put them together like that and keep their composure and be accurate when someone's on his way down almost, but Lee Wood was able to do so. Josh bravely fought to get to his feet, and he did get to his feet. Right at the end of the round, a couple of seconds left, I feel like, and I'm someone who's sometimes overcritical, not overcritical, but critical of, of people staying in too long, maybe trainers keeping their fighter in too long, or referee not not uh, stopping a fight when it, when it looks like there's not going to be a uh, it's just going to be a brutal beating. So I, I can be critical of people, but in this sense, and I'm not going to give Michael Alexander a hard time because he didn't know how long was left in the round. He just sees a really unsteady Josh Warrington, and he stops the fight. Now there was only a couple of seconds left in the round. If he had of noon. Like, I mean, he, he has a rough idea. He's a referee. He knows what three minutes feels like. He's a rough idea that it's very, very close to the end of the round. I think he probably should have let Josh go and have a rest, take your minute out, and then make a judgment. Maybe his corner, maybe his dad could have pulled him out in that minute. Maybe his dad would have sent him out again, and if he was still unsteady... The referee could have given, you know, three or four seconds and then, and then stopped the fight. But hindsight's a wonderful thing, so I'm not going to be too critical of, of the referee here. That's what happened. Uh, and Lee Wood done fantastically well to get the win. Come from behind, he was, he was being bullied at times, as I said. Looked like he was running out of ideas. But when you've got that knockout par, you're always in with it. Always in with a chance. Now, I just wonder, when I talked about it earlier on, Josh, Josh maybe being a, having one or two fights too many, two hard fights too many. I'll say that again. One or two hard fights too many. Does it catch up on you? It does at some point. And maybe three fights ago, a few fights ago, a year and a half ago, would he have been able to get up better? Would that shot have dropped him? Possibly not, but it possibly could have knocked him out. Who knows? Um... 
know the old saying, if your auntie had balls, you'd be your uncle. But there's a lot of a lot of different things to think about here. I felt really bad for Josh because he put in a performance that I didn't I didn't think he still had in him. So fair play to him. Um, I hope actually, you know, people talking about him looking to retire. I, I, I hope he wouldn't retire because I know how much he wants a fight in the States to bring the crazy lead fans out there, which would be fantastic for him. I would love that to happen. But Josh, on that performance, is still a world-class fighter and can still win a world title. But it will have to be soon. He can't hang around too, too much longer. He's not the youngest guy in the world anymore. Uh, and for Lee Wood, where does he go? I think a fight with Lopez. In my opinion, Lopez is the number one guy in the division. He's a fantastic fighter. Really explosive, strange style, but it's effective. Very, very good fighter. A fight with Lee Wood and Lopez. Barn burner. What a fight. Barn stormer. Barn burner. Call it whatever you want. It's a cracking fight. Um, but... Credit to both guys for putting in a, a, you know, making an exciting fight. It takes two to tango, obviously. Disappointed for Josh, but well done, Lee. And um, yeah, let's see what happens next.